hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber a warm welcome back this video is part of the viewer comment response series where i respond to a comment made by a viewer against one of my videos and the particular comment i'm responding to goes as follows i love your videos thank you do you mind doing a video for understated luxury shoe brands for women as far as pumps and possibly for sandals during summer I'm purchasing the Oran sandals and would love to see your take on summer sandals and just footwear for women in general. Thanks. I'm only going to focus on summer sandals in this video. I have another request as part of the VCR series to talk about work shoes. I'm going to group pumps together with work shoes and that'll be in a later video. I'm Anesu Sagond and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things. So whether you're someone who is young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality from the get-go, or you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, or you're someone who's into luxury but you want to focus more on the brands that operate very much under the radar and packing a mighty quality punch, then my content is geared towards you. I'm going to split my recommendations into three categories. Your mid-tier sandals, so sandals that are typically priced £250 and above. Your designer sandals, so that's about uh, £500 and above. And then your super brand designer sandals, so that's roughly £700 and above. And my focus is going to be on color, a lot of it, on comfort, on con construction, phenomenal craftsmanship, and classic designs. You buy the shoes today, you can wear them next year, um, in another 10, 15, 20 years, however long you wanna keep those sandals, the design typically will not go out of fashion. Looking at sandals generally across uh, the industry, you have your big online retailers. So think of Farfetch, Netta Porter, My Teresa, for example, your big luxury department stores, the usual suspects, Harrods, Harvey Nichols, Selfridges, Liberty of London, Fennec, for example. There's a lot of brand overlap. But what you will find with each retailer is that they will typically have their own unique colors or styles, which are you won't find um, anywhere else. So you could go around, see the same brands, but there will always be a unique color and style to each retailer. Uh, some of the brands worth getting on your radar, in addition to my recommendations, um, that would work well for the Oran, same level as the Oran. Um, Mid-tier brand, I have a couple. <clears throat> the first one, it's a brand that's done fantastically well off the pandemic, a lot of loungewear. It's a brand called Olivia Morris. A lot of people are working from home, spending prolonged periods of time at home. Whether you're working or entertaining, Olivia Morris at home is a fantastic brand purely for loungewear. It is footwear that is backless. It's a very short wedge heel. Shoes are made from fabric. Uh, so you have options of either velvet, there's linen, there's satin, a lot of very bright, bold colors and interesting designs with fun detail, fun quirky details, whether it's frills or polka dots, whatever it may be. They're great um, as indoor shoes, just lounging at home, you want to elevate your outfit, you want to wear something nice, you have people coming over, very comfortable, soft, fun, colorful, playful shoes can't recommend them highly enough as just loungewear that elevates an outfit they're priced around the 250 pound mark second brand is uh, natasha zinko natasha zinko very similar in terms of done well off loungewear thick uh, platform style slippers made from fabric whole range of very quirky styles they also have leather mid shin uh, boots interesting colors like pink for example open toe with interesting toe detail around the 300 pound mark for the sliders which are also unisex and then the boots you're looking at around the 500 pound mark S third brand studio amelie studio amelie very much um, inspired by your bottega veneta by the row the square toe from bottega the strappy sandals from the row at a fraction of the price it's very much a mid-tier brand in terms of the comfort the construction the leather is buttery soft very very comfortable it's delicate but you're getting a, 
a shoe that's priced around the 300 pound mark very much in the mid tier it's the type of brand based on the the material how delicate it is um, the construction I would recommend you buy it you wear it to death enjoy it for the summer you get one or two years from it and then you discard the shoe it's worn the leather is delicate it's going to wear and the construction is uh, nowhere near as for example your designer or your top end of the market with the super brands looking at shoes around the 300 pound mark next up are two designer level brands around the 500 pound mark the first two same creative director jonathan anderson it's jw anderson and loewe both brands are very much on their right on the rise they're becoming a lot more visible looking at jw anderson it's all about the backless mules come in a whole slew of different designs and the focus is very much on your chunky gold chain I've seen them out and about worn with Bottega bags with the chunky uh, gold chain as well. The two work very well and complement each other well. You're looking at around 500 pound mark, very comfortable shoes. The other uh, style from Jonathan Anderson is Loewe. Again, Loewe, as I mentioned, very similar to Bottega Veneta uh, three, four years ago when Daniel Lee joined the company and he was responsible for raising, for elevating its its publicity, the, the public's awareness. Same for Loewe, we're starting to see the brand out and about a lot more. Um, the ranges, there's a lot of it out and about. It's not just the handbag, you're seeing shoes, you're seeing clothes. On the shoe side, very much the trainers, different take to what we're seeing a lot of in the market. Think of, for example, Golden Goose with the worn look, or you have Saint Laurent, you have Church, you have Hugo Boss, with fairly simple standard trainers. But Loewe are coming in with the color and a slight different design element. You have the raised uh, rubber at the back, or you have the elasticated detail around the ankle. They've also introduced plimsolls, so other brands are also getting inspired to um, introduce their own take of plimsolls. Looking at prices of around 500 pounds for both Loewe and also JW Anderson. My final brand, uh, just generally across the industry, is Attico. Attico is coming in with incredibly bold designs and also colors. Their iconic mule is the Devon, very chunky heel. It's comfortable as your weight is spread over that heel. Fairly high shoe, but the angle at which it's elevated makes it a fairly comfortable shoe. Comes in a whole slew of your bright neon colors, green, pink, orange, for example, but they're very focused on the colors, on um, your statement designs, a lot of um, shoes that you tie around your ankle. And their shoes are priced around the 500 pound mark. There are a number of brands I would like to recommend alongside the Oran from Hermes uh, in terms of an alternative or alongside uh, in addition to buying the Oran. They are brands that compare like for like in terms of quality, uh, and construction with Hermes. Three of the brands I've already spoken about in a video where I talked about some of the best brands in the industry for quality, for construction, for comfort. I'm going to attach that video above. And the three brands are Aquazura, Gian Vito Rossi, and Manola Blahnik. I would like to throw into that equation um, another two brands, Rupert Sanderson and also Francesco Russo. The first three brands, Gian Vito Rossi, it's a brand I cannot fault in terms of quality, in terms of construction, in terms of comfort. It's one of the best. How would I rate the three I've mentioned? I would say Manola Blahnik number one, Gian Vito Rossi number two, and then Aquazura number three. But it's very much dependent on obviously your foot and what you would in turn find comfortable. But in terms of a padded, well-made, supportive shoe, nothing beats Manola Blahnik. But looking at Gian Vito Rossi first, um, I like them because they bring your classic, very easy to wear designs. The designs are incredibly easy. They're effortless, low fuss, um, classic colors as well. So think of black, throw into that as well, gold, silver. And then every season they do a variation of red, yellow, blue, or orange, for example. Uh, their sandals start from about 450, 500 pounds. And my sandals for this season are their L sandals. Tall stiletto, uh, pointed sandals in the red color, 
plexi front the red is ageless it won't um, age at all it's a color I will be able to wear for many years to come the plexi is incredibly comfortable it doesn't stretch it holds my foot into place it's clear it's classy it's a very well balanced shoe for its height the second brand is Aquazura, very similar to Gian Vito Rossi in that it's also focused on your more classic designs, but they uh, just dial it up a notch. There's a quirk, they make them a little more fun, there's a variation to them, but they're still largely classic designs which you can wear for many years to come. Again, in a range of your classic colors, but they also have your added colors as well. A little more of a colorful brand, but still very elegant, comfortable, well-made shoes. Top end is Manolo Blahnik. For comfort, for quality, for construction, they're an amazing brand and I wouldn't hesitate to recommend them. And what I like in addition to the quality and comfort is that they're bringing in a totally different style alternative to Aquazura and Gian Vito Rossi. They push the boat out. They're very much focused on color, on really fun, playful, feminine, whimsical designs and styles. Uh, they don't repeat anything every season so once they've done a particular uh, design using a particular material design for example they don't repeat it so you're not going to see something year after year again focused around your bold colors some are your spoiled for choice whether it's something um, flat like the oran they have so many different variations of your flat sandals whether it is in leather it's a fabric material it's patent it's plexi it is suede you are spoiled for choice richness of color as well and the designs and then they also take it up and they have uh, the kitten heel and you also have the option of a stiletto heel depending on your taste but your sport for choice i've tried the oran on a few times i'm very much about brands that operate under the radar so the oran is not a sandal i would be interested in because you see a lot of people wearing it relative to the other brands and it's a brand a lot of people aspire to and with the oran it um it's a fairly stiff shoe and hard on the bottom the leather is fairly strong it's solid so it keeps your foot enclosed and supported and then the inner sole and the outer sole are fairly hard. It's literally day and night between your Manola Blahnik flats and also your, uh, for example, Oran Hermes because they are hard, whereas Hermes is very much, uh, whereas Manola Blahnik is very much focused on a shoe, producing shoes that offer a lot of support to the, uh, to the balls of your feet. So you really notice the difference with Hermes. And then the color option is a lot greater from Manola. In terms of price, Manola Blahnik shoes, you're looking at a starting price of about £500. Uh, the Oran ranges in price from 510 through to about 590 depending on the design option. The other two brands I mentioned, Rupert Sanderson, very similar to Salvatore Ferragamo. It's a British brand in that it's for an older, more mature audience. Styles are very much focused around their iconic buckle, similar to Roger Vivier. And they come in a range of fairly classic designs, um, your classic colors, they have um, black and then varying hues of navy, green, burgundy, um, your blues uh, during the course of the year and also depending on the season. Starting price about 450 pounds and it's a different, uh, every season they do different um, sandals, every year rather, different sandals. So it's different styles all the time. The final, brand I'd like to recommend is Francesca Russo, a brand that operates very much under the radar. It's a brand I love and very few people have heard of it. Um, Francesco Russo is coming from amazing pedigree. He did um, a considerable amount of his training. He spent time designing actually at Sergio Rossi. Sergio Rossi is the father of Gian Vito Rossi, so he's coming from excellent pedigree. His shoes are built to last for quality for comfort his style is classic he has his own quirky element the raised um, back on his shoes which is uh, part of his, his signature offering and his um, cage sandals which are different they're something that not many people are doing not many brands are doing in the industry starting price is around 600 pounds but you're paying for an amazingly well-made product in terms of the quality the craftsmanship the balance women's shoes typically get a bad rap but women's shoes are not as well made as men's shoes at the top end of the market men's shoes are typically hand stitched whereas women's shoes it's all about how well glued they are 
the craftsmanship, the fabric, the quality of the material that's used. So that becomes really important. And brands such as Gian Vito Rossi, Manola Blahnik, Aquazura, Francesco Russo, Rupert Sanderson are using some of the best uh, fabrics, products, craftsmanship um, as a way, I guess, to overcompensate for the fact that the shoes are glued as opposed to stitching with your Goodyear welting. I want to talk about um, uh, recommendations at the top end of the market, just super brands, but this video will become too lengthy. What I will do is create a separate video because there's a brand I would really like to talk about, a brand that's literally a cat amongst the pigeons. It, it is a game changer in the industry. Once that video has been done, I will include it at this point, but I will create a separate video in a, a few weeks' time. But any further questions about the brands I've recommended in this particular video, let me know in the comments down below, as always. Do share this video with other people interested in luxury at the top end, brands operating under the radar, and do subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon.